Thanks, Justin. We'll take it over from here. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for showing up for this uh, presentation about the learning uh, Handbook of Learning Analytics, the second edition. And I'm just going to share the screen and start up the slideshow. So uh, this is the second edition of the Learning Analytics Handbook. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, we'll go over a little bit of the rationale and the motivation for both the handbooks uh, and this one in particular. We'll talk a little bit about what is new, what, what changes we made and kind of why we made changes uh, between the first and second edition. We'll then uh, have a bit of a discussion about the different types of challenges uh, that, that we think come up in creating a book like this. And then we'd like to throw it open and see if anyone has any questions. So we'll get right into it. The rationale for the uh, Handbook of Learning Analytics is uh, primarily the first, uh, the, the upper boxes on this um, slide. It's to provide an entry point for people interested in learning analytics. And it's also to provide a teaching tool for instructors to teach about learning analytics. Now, when you set out to do that, you end up by just the nature of it, doing the bottom two boxes, which is that you end up trying to summarize the state of the field uh, at a particular point in time. For us, it was kind of just before the pandemic, so a bit of a weird uh, time point, um, but that's the time point that we've captured. And then you also have this, uh, this secondary thing, which is to define foundational concepts, because you have to make editorial decisions about what is going in the book and what's not going in the book. And so you, uh, when you're writing a book entitled The Handbook of Learning Analytics, that comes with a certain uh, cachet or a certain responsibility, a certain assumption that maybe you are defining the field in some way. And we'll have a bit more of a discussion about that uh, towards the end, about whether that is really the right way to look at this, this text. Um, I'll throw it open to Drag and Alyssa to see if they want to add anything. Does that capture our kind of rationale pretty reasonably? I've got nods, we can, we can proceed. Um, so looking at what's new in the first edition, it came out in 2017, there were 30 chapters, uh, there were 61 unique authors from 10 countries, and it's been translated into Chinese at this point. Uh, the sections for the first edition were foundational concepts, techniques and approaches, which were kind of methodology uh, ideas, uh, applications, and then institutional strategies and systems. Uh, the distinction there was that uh, the institutional strategies and systems kind of covered uh, processes and things like uh, data responsibility within institutions, because that seemed to be a big piece of things, whereas applications could be uh, intelligent tutoring systems or like what, are, what happens when we use this particular dashboard in a particular place. Uh, that was the distinction then. The, uh, for the first edition of the handbook, we uh, have this kind of this uh, average user uh, graph over the year, um, which is it seems to peak in the over the summer and then again in September. And Alyssa has pointed out that these peaks probably map onto events hold, held by uh, solar. So the first uh, the big peak is probably LASI when uh, the students and uh, uh, practitioners and researchers come together in the summer to talk about new methods. So people refer to the handbook then. And then uh, as people are writing their, their submissions for the LAC conference, it peaks again. Um, that, uh, but yes, I, I had some other interpretations. I don't, I think Lissa is right though. Uh, so the second edition, uh, here are some of the, the changes that we made. Uh, of course, came out in 2022, came out this year. Uh, there were fewer chapters, fewer unique authors, uh, and there were authors from 11 different countries. But uh, there's a bit of an asterisk there in that a lot of those authors came in a single chapter because we had a chapter that was purposefully international in nature and sought to, to bring authors from different countries together. So we're probably about the, the, the same or slightly above per chapter. And we actually tried to shrink the size of the chapter to better fit with this, this uh, its role as, a, as teaching material and as introductory material. So we wanted uh, the chapters to be about 4,000 words. 
Whereas in the previous edition, they some of them went went very high, eight ten thousand word chapters. The sections which we shrank down as well to uh, a methods and techniques section and applications and a use and systems um, section. So the the difference here was that the methods and techniques had to some extent matured over the, the five years. So uh, we could be more definitive about what those were. So we could have a kind of methods and techniques chapter as opposed to an approaches chapter. Uh, applications stayed. And then I might pull on Alyssa to supplement uh, my definition of use, of use and systems. But the I, I think the idea there is, oh, you want to take over there on what use and systems kind of captures? Uh, I'm no, I thought you were handing it over to me. Go okay. ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll. So I would say the, the, I would say the use in systems uh, is to take the a more ecological view of learning analytics and try to fit learning analytics within classrooms. What, the, what does it mean to the individual then classrooms and schools and then, uh, and then universities and society at large? It was this idea that systems and the application of learning analytics uh, affects things at different levels of those systems. Is that fair enough, Alyssa? Um, yeah, I think that's totally reasonable. I think the other reason we put use in versus strategies, if, if you know, instructional strategies were sort of what people took on as they were trying to get people to use the systems, but at the time of the first edition, there wasn't a ton of use to look at, whereas now we can talk more about what happens when use occurs, which is what led to what you just said, all the different levels. And so I would say going from strategies, which is sort of aspirational to use, which is actualized, also shows a little bit of the, the development and maturation of the field. Yeah, that, that's a really good point, actually. That really probably the big difference between the first and second edition is that it wasn't so much people saying, this is what could happen, this is what's possible. It was more, look, we did this thing, and we know now we have some information to say, to tell you what, what did happen. Can I, can I make one other uh, comment, Charles? Of course. Um, the absence of a section on foundational concepts does not mean that there aren't any. It meant that we didn't feel like we had chapters that sort of uniquely and comprehensively represented them. And I think Charles will talk more about this, but you know, having a section called foundational concepts sort of implies we know what they are, they're these things, and these are all the things. And we felt that there was enough conversation about what was and wasn't foundational and how the chapters were framed that that felt too definitive. But it doesn't mean that there aren't any. So that's just another asterisk, perhaps. Yeah, that's a, another really, really good point. Um, I mean, it's almost like the more you know, the less certain you are. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where we, we got to on the foundational concepts. So uh, there was a bunch of new content that had kind of become important within the field that we felt had become more important and people were writing more about uh, when we looked across Slack and other, other venues. Uh, so uh, we wanted to include uh, new, uh, new content. Uh, one of these was temporality. Uh, so what does time mean for, for learning analytics? Super important, uh, especially methodologically. Um, fairness, bias, and equity had, had exploded within over the last five years. So we needed something around that. It wasn't, uh, learning analytics wasn't purely about ethics, uh, where the, those concerns were coming from. It seemed to be embedded in, in many more of the, the areas. So it was important to have that. Collaboration had also likewise uh, really uh, kind of, I think that was a, a, a marriage of uh, changes in technology and uh, importing ideas from other fields that came into learning analytics uh, over the last five years to make it really important. Um, games, also uh, also uh, a growing area. Data literacy, uh, m something that, that learning analytics had kind of played with for previously, but, but maybe this is one of these things where things had solidified a little bit more, uh, both within government work and within research that we could say something more definitive that wasn't just like, well, wouldn't it be nice if it was like this? Uh, and then human-centered approaches, also something that gained a lot of traction. And uh, K-12, which as many people within the learning analytics community have pointed out, K-12 is something that, that we want to develop, but it's very hard to develop. And so really we ha didn't have enough information previously to have a whole chapter on it. And 
in this edition, it really is uh, the the main chapter for K twelve is really this is what this is what's happening in a bunch of different countries. We don't necessarily know what the overall trend is here, but uh, things are happening. Uh, but but yeah, it it's it trying to trying to emphasize this importance of K twelve, uh, but that it is really hard to do. So onto the challenges, and we've already touched on this slightly. We don't want to necessarily present the handbook as the one true ontology of learning analytics. This isn't uh, some kind of grand theory of how everything fits together. We don't know what that is. Uh, things are very much in flux. Technology is changing all the time. Um, so it really is a snapshot and it should be treated like that when you're teaching with it. So if you are going to a class, I think the message that we would we think should be conveyed is uh, things are changing. This is a snapshot from 2022. Um, these things are probably trends, if anything. And we, uh, but this isn't uh, gospel that that everything is exactly like this, or that the views in here will not change, and the people who have them won't change their mind in the next five years. They probably will. Uh, does anyone else, Dragon or Alyssa, want to weigh in on that? No, nothing particular to add there. I think, uh, Charles, that's a pretty fair thing. Our idea was to basically try to include as many different concepts rather than to try to provide a comprehensive taxonomy of the things. And uh, we also wanted to make sure that we include as many of these different topics just to basically, you know, get the conversation going. At the same time, also do the justice and represent some of these topics that required a fair bit of attention in the last five uh, years before between the two handbooks. I think that's probably the best description of the handbook rather than the intention to basically provide one comprehensive, beautifully uh, a systematized taxonomy of the things that are happening in the field. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, we, what we think we have unearthed here is is that there are consistencies so there are there is some consistency across how analysis analyses are happening we think there's some consistencies about why those things are happening so the problems that people are trying to solve with learning analytics and that uh, that there is consistency within this this structural thing and so we took those things and created the sections from those things techniques applications and use and systems as we've talked about previously. Um, but yeah, it was quite challenging to figure out how to chunk this information in a way that was both accessible and made sense, I guess. And that was probably the key thing that we, we tried to do. So another challenge here, which, which follows on from that is is we actually, as learning people within learning analytics, have committed to trying to integrate all these things. So then, subdiv subdividing them and breaking them all apart to put them into a book is, is somewhat challenging, right? Like we don't actually think that there are hard lines between all these things. You can't have a technique without some kind of use and system uh, uh, effect because it ha is having some impact on a problem that's important. So we do want you to take the book as, as a whole thing, not, oh, I'm going to go be uh, into learning analyti analytics methods. And that's the thing I'm going to do. And the rest doesn't matter. You should probably take at least a cursory glance at the other sections um, because they do all kind of fit together. We're not trying to say that these things are completely separate. Um, but we also know that different people need different entry points to this content. So we wanted sections that actually reflected that, that some people will be really into methodology and that that is the easiest access point for them. Some people are really into the politics of education and they, they also need an access point. Some people are really into psychology and they really, and maybe, so maybe collaboration or they really care about teaching practice. And so they need some kind of teacher facing entry point. What we wanted to do was maximize the number of these entry points, but without making it just a cacophony of, of stuff.
that that would be overwhelming if that makes sense um does that reflect things accurately yeah yeah sorry charles i couldn't find the unmute for a second i think we were also putting forth this example just to show that there's different entry points to the same kind of application and so it might be useful to think about there are natural connections, for example, right? Like network analysis, you know, the example we have here, network analysis works particularly well when looking at collaboration. Oh, where is I'm sorry. Um, no, the next one. <laughs> right, so this is the, the example we had put up there. Um, and just, just sort of thinking about the ways, because it's, some people, it's it's not mix and it's not full mix and match, right? There are certain approaches that are more useful for with certain theories or in certain settings, and so I think we saw as you know each of the sections is a way to start, and to perhaps you know if you're interested in network analysis and you read that chapter, you'll see very quickly that it's particularly useful for collaboration, which might send you over to another chapter. So you know a little bit of a choose your own adventure kind of approach to navigating, because no one reads a handbook from start to finish. So I think that was another idea we had was that you you start in the section that's you know drawing you and then that should hopefully give you entree to what other chapters and other sections you might be most interested to read. Exactly. Who would read a handbook start to finish? That would be that's okay. a test. Some people for... some people do do that. Perhaps you're one of them, but I would <laughs> no. say that for many people that is not how they read it, especially when it's digital. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll collect analytics to see how people read it. Yeah. Okay, so that is uh, uh, the end of our kind of formal introduction. We hope you read it. Uh, there's the website to go and take a look, download. You can download the entire thing if you are one of those people who wants to read front, uh, cover to cover. Uh, and uh, But if you want to go section by section, that you can download each chapter separately. Uh, at very, very soon, probably by September, we hope to have a hard, a hard physical copy that you will be able to order for. Uh, as cheap as we can possibly make it. Um, uh, so that is also in, in the works. So I'll throw it over to, uh, if you'd like to ask a question, the probably easiest thing is to do it within the chat. Uh, or Justin, can people take over the microphone or not? I can make it so they can, yeah. Okay. So, um do you how do you usually do this do you usually let people speak either way yeah okay unmute i've disabled it yeah great okay so you can you can take the microphone if you have a question Yes, Ibrahim. Yeah, thank you very much, Charles, and every other one hosting here. It's, it's a pleasure to to hear from this. Uh, I'm coming from um, an education slash psychometrics background, and um, though I've been reading a few resources about learning analytics, I just wanted to know um, what's like the the pathway. What are some of the skills um, someone would need? Um, in order to take a part in learning analytics over here in Nigeria is not something that's quite popular. And then um, most of the resources are things that um, are drawn from the developed world, especially Western countries, US, and then most of Europe. So it's kind of like novel idea here in Nigeria. So I just wanted to know what is it we're going to do to um, someone can do? What are the resources you recommend as a, a newbie, a total newbie in learning analytics? Whether you suggest we can do that? Thank you very much. I can, oh, Dragon? Yeah, sure. Or oh, Charles, if you don't give a first take, and then I can also jump in. Sure. So uh, as we were saying before, if, if you have a background in psychometrics, maybe that's the best place to, to enter. So I would suggest with respect to the handbooks that you start with the, the uh, Gray and Bergner chapter and see where that takes you. With respect to skills, uh, the skills are not going to be dissimilar from what you uh, have in measurement in some ways, 
but the context is probably going to be very different. So it's going to be about getting experience with technology and the things that you measure within technology if you wanted to go that track. Uh, Dragon, is that, do you want to completely disagree with me right now? No, no, I think that those are really good two points. Um, my, my view is also to probably also look for some of the other resources in addition to the handbook that are available. This is just a small snapshot of the field and potential entry to the field and the chapter that Charles indicated is really helpful. But I would probably also watch out for some of the online events as well that the Society for Learning Analytics Research organizes, such as uh, LASI, Learning Analytics Summer Institute, which was held in the last couple of years fully online. And also there were even different ways how people from developing countries can enter that event to basically honor the income differences as well as part of the process. Um, the key, in addition to what Charles indicated, is like methodological differences is that often uh, in psychometrics, you will deal with uh, an idea that you will get good quality data, so to say, meaning that you will create and design really good tests that will meet certain criteria of validity and reliability. In learning analytics, I'm afraid we are far away from getting data that will offer you significant levels of reliability and validity. And we deal with fairly um, dirty data, with fairly noisy data as well. There are about the uh, students' online interactions that are happening as part of the educational processes. But that basically also gives you an interesting new quest as well to uh, analyze things in a more authentic learning setting and also to understand probably a bit more about the certain things that are related to the processes. Therefore, uh, for the actual uh, application of learning analytics and to try to actually do it in do it in practice ideally is if you are involved into some form of teaching then basically try to actually uh, start with the data that you already have in your disposal or in disposal in the school or the university wherever you are currently working at and try to get the kind of the access to the data but also by bearing in mind certain ethical um, and privacy protection principles in mind that will actually make sure that you are, while you are using that data and potentially also doing some good with it, you also don't do much harm or any harm for that matter. Um, Charles, I was going to add a couple of things on top of those, if that works. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think uh, I, everything that Dragon said about psychometrics where you get to design the data versus dealing with the data we have is, is an important point and it leads to a lot of the things we talk about in terms of questions of inference and proxies and you know it's a lot more about how do you start to engineer variables when you're working after the fact. Uh, the other thing I was going to point out is that for those people who are looking to get started beyond just the handbook, um, uh, at our research center, we put together something, I'll throw the link in the chat, called LA101, and this is a set of resources that are from the community. We didn't create them, we just compiled them, um, and some of the chapters from the handbook are there, but it's also got links to videos, some from the Learning Analytics Learning Network, some from Solar, and a bunch of tutorials, so if people are looking for something to get a little more hands-on, this might be a place to access some of the resources that were already out there. We just kind of tried to put them together in one place by different topic. And it's, you know, some of the skills people are asking about has to do with, you know, are you going to be working in the area of text mining? Are you going to working with predictive models? It depends a lot about what you want to know in the context you're working in. So there's not maybe one set of skills, but thinking about what skills are going to help you do work, answer questions and inform action in the areas in which you're trying to work. Yes, so that, that was probably a, a lot of information. Uh, I might just add one last thing, which is that it's, I, I think it's probably the, the wrong idea to think that, that, the, that anyone has learning analytics completely figured out. Uh, and that really there's a lot of opportunity to uh, contribute and to figure things out moving, moving forward, right? Like that nothing is completely solved. Uh, like, like both Dragon and Alyssa said, the, the data is really hard to deal with because it's it's messy, um, and there's there's a million other problems. So I don't know that that necessarily uh, even looking to to anyone saying okay, they're way ahead is even 
a correct way of looking at it because also there's a bunch of contextual factors that you will have to deal with within your context that may change uh, uh, so many things about how you would analyze the data. Is that fair? Alyssa is looking skeptical. <laughs> My skeptical look was was thinking about what George wrote in the chat, not what about you what you were oh, saying. Okay. Um, okay. Good, good. Um, so uh, hopefully that's helpful, Ibrahim. Uh, does that make sense? Have we uh, uh, overwhelmed you with information? No, it's it's cool. It's cool. It's quite interesting to know that uh, uh, someone has this uh, already foundational skill sets that can. Uh, allow one get into the field and then um, from the discussion that um, George and Alyssa has provided and you also, it's important for us to, to take our learning, um, to be intentional about learning, about learning, in, um, learning about learning analytics. So thanks for the resources. I've seen some of them in the chat. Um, I'm trying to curate some of these resources and then do a follow-up. And um, I'm very, very grateful for all contributions. Thank you very much. No problem at all. And just to, to say, like, really, Learning Analytics is a very broad community and very welcoming. And anyone is really, anyone can contribute. And I don't want that to be lost uh, with, like, when we talk about foundational concepts and things like that. It's, it's really open to anyone. And anyone can contribute and make, make a difference within the field, I would say. Sorry, Alyssa, I cut you off. No, I was. I haven't started yet. Uh, I was just going to respond to George's comment, and George, feel feel free to respond to my response, which is that I I don't disagree with what he put in the chat about the fact that methodologically learning analytics is not as rigorous as psychology, uh, in part due to some limitations in the data we're getting, or as technical as pure data science, but. Um, at least in comparison to people who've worked in pure data science, we have quite a few who've come to work with us. And one of the challenges is that you can be very technically apt in working with certain algorithms, but if you apply them to learning data in ways that don't make sense, uh, you know, you kind of get the garbage in, garbage out kind of problem where it's not even garbage, but it's sort of something that scrambles it. And so, you know, the point that Charles was making about everybody able to contribute, I think where learning and Linux research has made a nice contribution and again you know is really a space for people coming from other people to make it is in that intersection how do you take existing methodologies especially if you're someone with training who knows how to use them well and apply them to questions of learning and learning data in interesting ways but particularly in ways that allow for useful and valid inferences that help us understand and inform or support and improve learning because um, you can you can be great technically, but if you're not thinking about the data, um, you know, cleverly and with respect to sort of the situation it came from educationally, you can end up doing some pretty strange things. And that's where I think we've seen a lot of really nice innovation. It's it's not being just technical. It's not being just in education, but really figuring out how those pieces fit together. Feel free to disagree, George, Dragon, or Charles, but that's sort of what I was seeing. No, I agree with Alice. It completely makes sense as well. And some, you know, there, there are a fair bit of kind of discussions as well in some of these foundational as well papers that were published before about the key dimensions that learning analytics entails. And um, Alice has somewhat implicitly indicated that, you know, we need to kind of make sure that we cover the theory that we are trying to um understand or that we are using to underpin our decisions in learning analytics that's clearly one part of the story the other part of the story is also a fair bit of things related to design and how we are uh, making certain whether we are talking about environments learning designs or just the tools themselves and how people are interacting with them and they're also shaping the ways that we actually need to create our learning analytics and use some of our uh, learning analytics. So, uh, and then final thing that I think is really emerging much more and more explicitly, and Charles also hinted in the presentation as well is the issues of fairness and bias and the ways how they are, are um, covered there. So what I'm trying to say with all this is that while learning analytics can offer uh, many of these great and exciting insights, if you also don't build on what we already know about learning, teaching, and education, we are not going to basically provide many exciting insights nor particular good uh, enhancements of the broader field of education.
that's a really really good point. Uh, thanks, Dragon. Should we um, take another question? So, so, so everything is uh, going to everything is going to be in English. I see. Is it hoping that the translation for Korean? I see that as Sophia's uh, comment. Because the first edition was translated into Korean, is that I believe that happened, right? And so she's asking if the second edition will also get translated. Uh, it's it's possible. I think the I think that it is underway for the second edition to be translated into Chinese currently. Um, the way these things roll out is quite complicated and takes a long time. But hopefully, we can repeat everything that we previously did uh, for the first edition, um, and hopefully add add some languages as well. I, I think actually in the first edition, Keris from Korea actually reached out to us. So, uh, and maybe Sophia, if you have any contacts at Keris, you might let them know a second edition is out because they actually were the ones who initiated the process last time. And that's a lot of how it happens is that a country reaches out. And so that if you have any contacts there, that might be a way to, to move that forward. So if, if uh, this is testing my, my teacher wait time uh, skills, um, but if there's no further questions, um, I think we can probably call it there, Justin. Is that fair? Yeah, unless there are any other questions. Sid, feel free to grab the mic, last, last opportunity. Otherwise, we'll then end. Everyone's too excited to go off and read, obviously. obviously. Oh, obviously, yes. OK, then um, I guess I'll go ahead and just say, um, we'll, again, I'll post the recorded uh, recording for the uh, session uh, on the Learning Analytics Learning, Net Learning Network website. Um, you can check it out. Feel free to share with anybody that you know that uh, might be interested in the session. Uh, we definitely have a lot of people that come and check out these recordings um, after the sessions that can't make it. And I know I had a couple reach out to me today. so. Um, Again, I just want to thank uh, Dragon, Alyssa, and Charles so much for taking the time to, to share this great resource with us. Great. I might just also throw in that uh, we should thank all the all, all the editors, yeah. so George Siemens and Alyssa and Dragon and Agath Basson uh, and Sola for funding the publication and all the authors, uh, the 48 of them who, who did this uh, and put this together, as well as all the reviewers and editors. Thanks to everyone. Absolutely. All right. Thanks all.